Hey everybody, welcome to activity 4.1. Today I'm going to introduce to you the first formal writing assignment that I'm going to be giving you, which is going to be to write the best email that you can to a person of your choice. I'm excited because this is going to be your chance to show me all that you've learned over the past couple of weeks. Do you remember way back at the beginning of this unit, I had you write an imaginary example email in Seesaw just to me, asking to me to help you get caught up on, on some like missing work? And that was, you did that at the very beginning of the unit before we had learned anything about what goes into a good email. And you just sort of wrote it as you would. And then later on in the unit, you actually used a rubric and you went back and looked at your first try. And you probably noticed you were missing some pieces, right? Well, now this is at the end of the unit and you have the rubric now and you know it should go into a good email. So this is your chance to show off and to show me the best writing that you can do in this genre of writing, email writing. So what I want to do today is actually two things. First, we're going to look at the general assignment instructions. And then second, we'll look at the step that I'm going to ask you to do today for activity 4.1, which is just to plan your email. We'll actually be doing uh, each activity this week will be a little additional step in the email writing process. And by the time you finish with activity 4.4, you'll be sending your email. So let's go ahead and get started. We'll be working all week with a Google Doc, and, the, and it's a Google Doc that I've made for you. And the way that you access it is through Google Classroom. So in the Apps Used column down here, go ahead and click on the icon for Google Classroom, and then navigate to Communications, and at the top, of course, as always, go to the Classwork tab. And the document that we're going to be working in all week this week is this one right here. It's called Writing Assignment Number 1, Email. And this is actually, you'll see it says it's for activity 4.1 through 4.4. So I'm going to click on that to expand this and then click on this to open the document. So um, the, the, there's a lot of pages to this document, but don't panic. Um, the reason there's a lot of pages is at the end I've given you a couple of resources. And um, I've also broken it up into four different steps. So we're just going to take it one little bit at a time. Let's start by just looking at this first page, which is just the general directions for the assignment. Let's start with the first paragraph. Read along with me. Over the past couple of weeks, we've learned about the parts of an email, as well as learned some important email etiquette tips. We've practiced checking example emails, some of them good, some of them bad, using our email rubric checklist. And now it's your turn to show me everything you've learned about what goes into a great, email. So let's look at the topics. You're going to choose one of these three topics as your email topic uh, for the email that you're going to write. And you're actually going to send your email to somebody, a real person. Okay, let's look at option A. It says for this one, you could choose a friend or family member who you don't see often or who maybe you didn't get to see this summer. Maybe you did see them in the summer, but they don't live around here. Um, and I want you to write a friendly letter email which is just sort of like a, a catching up type email to this person, updating them on your life, asking them about theirs. In this email, you might wish to tell them about some highlights from your summer, and maybe also you want to tell them about how online school is for you, how it's going so far. So that's option A. Option B uh, would be to choose a teacher, or it could be principal or secretary or another school staff that you knew in a former grade. So like you might write a letter to Miss Port, an email to Miss Portinga or Mr. Baldonado. They would love to hear from you, I'm sure. You could even write one to Miss Gilson if you were here in kindergarten. Um, I'm sure she would be delighted to get an email from you. So choose a former teacher and then write to the, an email to them that updates them about what's going on in your life right now. Tell them about your summer, tell them about how online school is for you, any of those things. Ask them about how they're doing and maybe thank them for teaching you. So that's option B. Option A and B are really quite similar. It's just that for A, it's somebody that you know maybe outside of school. Option B is a former teacher, somebody at school that you uh, used to have. Option C is a little different. This would be if you wanted to choose a teacher or a principal or secretary that you currently have. So like me or Mr. Aronson or Mrs. Baya or Ms., uh, Mrs. Ippel, Mr., uh, Mr. Ippel our principal or Mr. Ensign. Um, and it should be if somebody who you have a question for, who you need to find something out about class. 
And so if you know you've got something you need to ask anyways, you could um, actually use that this email to write that question to the, the teacher. So you're going to write an email asking your question to that teacher. But don't forget that you also should add some of the things into that email that we've been talking about good emails have, like thanking the teacher for their hard work, offering them some words that will compliment or encourage them as well. So even if you choose option C, uh, you're still going to add in some other things besides just the question you want to ask your teacher. All right. So in a little bit, you'll get to decide option A, B, or C. But let's look at the rest of this first page. So it says directions. Go through the rest of this document step by step to plan, draft, and revise and edit your email before finally sending it to your recipient at the end of the week. So the rest of this document will take you through activity 4.1, 4.2, 4.3, and 4.4. And all of them are going to be about the writing process for your email. And by the time you finish activity 4.4, you'll be sending your email. Requirements. When writing your email, please refer to the email rubric checklist, which is the last page of this document, or you can just use this handy little check, this little link right here, and it'll take you down. This is what I'm going to use to grade you, to grade your email that you send out. And so you have it ahead of time. You know you need to include all those pieces. Okay, let me go back up again to the first page. And good. Um, so please refer to the email rubric checklist to be reminded of all the features that you should have in your email. But in addition to the check boxes that are in that rubric, I'm looking for a couple of other things. Firstly, your email's length should fit your purpose of your email. So you're going to notice right now, I'm not telling you the length that, that your email needs to be necessarily. I'm not saying it has to be at least five sentences or anything like that. I'm saying think about what your purpose is, and it should fit that. So for option A or option B, where you're writing sort of like a catching up someone up on your life type email, it's going to be a little bit long. I mean, it's not going to be a whole novel, but you're going to need to be a little bit detailed and really tell that person what's happened in your life. If you choose option C, it might be a little bit shorter, but it should still include some other pieces, like I said, like thanking them and um, encouraging them. So regardless, your email should be more than one or two sentences. Okay, so again, your, the length should suit the purpose of your email. We'll talk a little bit more about that when we look at the planning page. The second one is pay attention to paragraph formatting. See example email below. So I'm going to just go there for a second to say what I mean. Um, let's just look at the main body of this email. Do you notice how it says, Dear Mr. Short, and then there's this uh, line of blank white space after it, dividing the next paragraph? I want you to make sure your email has that as well. Then between this introductory paragraph and the second paragraph, there's another white line of space. The way that you create that is you just hit enter two times, and that leaves that empty white line of space. Again, another white line of space here, and then another white line of space between the last paragraph and then the signature block or the closing. So I, I am asked, I'm going to expect that you pay attention to the paragraph formatting. This paragraph for formatting is what's called block formatting. And block formatting is a little bit different than typical paragraphs because the paragraphs are not indented. The first line of every paragraph is not pushed in five spaces like a normal paragraph, and that's okay for an email. That is what's considered good conventions for email writing. The way that you divide paragraphs instead of indenting is to put in these white lines of space by hitting enter twice. Okay, let's go back up to the top again. So pay attention to paragraph formatting. When possible, include an introductory and conclusion paragraph to your email. We'll talk about that in a minute. And then the last thing, it says you should do all those things that we talked that, about good emails doing, polite emails doing, like asking your person that you're writing questions. If you're telling about your life, say, hey, how about your life? How are you doing? Thank them, compliment them, encourage them. Um, that, that's just part of email courtesy, and I'm expecting you to make sure you include that in your email. All right, so let's go down to the first step. This is what I'm going to ask you to do today. You don't have to do all the, the entire email today. You're just going to do the first step of the writing process, which is to plan your email. So you can see it even says here, step one planning, activity 4.1. Uh, and it's just this second page here. 
is all you have to do for this activity. Okay, so let's start at the top. It says for my topic, I will choose option, and then there's this green box. So what I mean by that is up here, option A, B, or C, which one of these are you going to use as your email topic? Let's just say that I, I'm going to write to my grandparents who live in Canada. I did not get to see them this summer because the border was closed because of COVID. And so I'm going to write a letter to them, an email to them, just catching them up on how I'm doing and how my family is doing. So I'm going to choose option A. You could choose option A, B, or C. It's up to you. But I would type in this box, A. Okay? Now, I will write to, and then it says name of person, position of person, email address. So I would say I'm, an, I'm writing to my grandpa and grandma uh, Blosser. Um, they are my mom's parents. They're the ones that live in Canada. And that's, that's their name, okay? Position of person just means, like, how do you know them? How are they related to you? What, like, what's the situation here? So I would just say they're my grandparents. And then what's their email address? Now, I'm not going to put theirs in here right now because I have to go into my, ad, my contacts to find it. And you might have to do the same. If it's a family member who um, you're not sure what their email address is, please ask your parents for help to find their email address. Or if you're writing to a former teacher and you need help finding their email address, let me know and I can help you hopefully try and track that down, okay? But try and at the beginning of the week rather than waiting until the end, track down their email address now so that um, you have time to find it and uh, put it right there in that box. Okay, now let's look it down at this part. Uh, it says plan out the body. This is like the message part of your email. And you're just going to plan in bullet point form what kinds of details or ideas you're going to put into your email. So um, let me show you what this table is. There's, it looks like a lot here. But over here on the left-hand column, this is telling you the parts that I want you to include in your message. And I even have some sub points here telling you what you should do in each part. So we'll look at that in a second. And then in the middle, I'm giving you an example as if I'm writing to my grandparents. And then in the third column, I'm giving you space to plan out your ideas that you want to put in yours. Okay, so hopefully it makes sense. Over here, I'm telling you what you should do in that section. Here's an example. This is a place for you to write yours. Now, one thing about this example is in the middle column, my example is I'm writing as if I had chosen option A. And so just so you know, um, this really fits for option A or option B better. But if you are choosing option C and you're writing more of like a, like a formal email to a teacher to ask a question, probably you're going to want to look at this other example instead, instead of looking at my middle column. So if you just click on it, you'll see it's like an example student email of a student who's asking a question. And I would say refer to that, that this email instead to help you out with that. Okay. So um, let's take a look at these three parts. Almost always in an email, your email is going to be, on average, three paragraphs. Um, the first paragraph is going to just be a short introduction paragraph. The main paragraph, the middle one, is going to be your main one that contains the meat of what you're trying to say. And then your last third paragraph is going to be another short closing paragraph. Now, I know in elementary school, your teacher is always, you know, reinforce to you that a paragraph should always have five sentences, right? But with an email, typically it is okay in the conventions of an email to have very, very short introductions and very, very short closing paragraphs. They don't have to be long. They can be one or two sentences often, okay? So for example, um, here's typically what you'll do in an introduction paragraph, no matter which option you chose, A, B, or C. You'll first of all wanna start by wishing your recipient well. Say something like, I hope that this email finds you well, or I hope you're having a great summer, or I hope your day is going well today. Um, the reason that you start by wishing the person well is that compliment sandwich idea. You know, almost anything you're going to say, it's always good to layer it with positive things, right? Okay. And then in that same paragraph, tell the person why you're writing them. What's the purpose of this email? So that they know right off the bat what to expect. So you might say, I'm writing this email to catch you up on how my summer was. Or I'm writing this email to ask you a quick question about class. Tell them what you're going to be saying. 
Then you've got your main paragraph in the middle. Now this one should be long. It doesn't have to be a whole novel again, but it should be substantial. This is where you're actually saying what it is you're saying, okay? So tell the person your main message. If you're updating them on your life, this is where you tell them about your life, about your summer, about how you're doing, okay? Be detailed. If you're writing about the fact that you went to Arizona this summer, please don't just say, I went to Arizona this summer, period. Next paragraph. That person doesn't really know what you did. Arizona is a big state. What did you do while you were there? Okay, be detailed, be descriptive. I would say you should probably have, I have six sentences there. You should have at least that. I probably, when I would write my draft, it would be more. All right, then your closing paragraph can be short again. In the closing paragraph, typically, um, you would ask the person about themselves. Uh, if, you're, if you spent most of the email, your last paragraph telling all about yourself, in the last paragraph, be like, how about you? How are you doing? Um, you might not ask them about themselves if, uh, if you're doing option C. But for any option, you should end with a compliment or a note of thanks. Be, say something like, thank you for taking the time to read this email. Um, I hope to hear from you soon. I hope you have a great end to your summer. Um, again, ending with, like, with that compliment sandwich, you start with something positive and you end with something positive again. Okay? So you guys can take a look at my example here to help you. Or you can look at this example email here, but I want you to plan out what are you going to say in your introduction paragraph and type it right here. Then what are you going to say in that middle paragraph, which is the big one where you're going to put your detail? And then what are you going to say in your closing paragraph? Look at the examples to help you. You do not have to write yet in full complete sentences. You can just do bullet points. You're just thinking about what you're going to say. All right. So that is activity 4.1 just completing this one page. All right, good luck with planning your email. Let me know if you have any questions. Thanks.